In today's video, I want to go over three important features of the Morph SVG plugin. When it comes to morphing complex shapes with varying numbers of points, it's important to consider the visual integrity of the animation. Morph SVG has a lot of optimizations under the hood to give you the best results. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of Greensock's Morph SVG and another tool. This demo is from an actual project of one of our users who wanted the best results between these two shapes. Although the other tool can support shapes with different numbers of points, you'll see the morph gets pretty weird and twisted. The GSAP version maintains its symmetry and offers aesthetically pleasing results. And here's another demo with a wide range of morphs. You'll notice that the other tool on the right often shears or gets inverted in undesirable ways. Next I want to show you how to avoid kinks and get more natural morphs with type rotational. In this demo here, we're doing a morph between two very basic shapes, and I want to point out that about halfway through, you're going to see a little bit of a kink happen right here. Let me pause and just scrub back a little bit. So as it's morphing, you get this sort of corner that shows up and it's not very smooth. All right, and what I wanna do is show you exactly why that happens and how we're going to solve that little problem. So I'm just gonna click here to turn on this UI. And traditionally, Morph SVG has used what's called a linear interpolation. So let's just click on show handles. And this is going to show us the path that the control points are going to follow during a morph. Let me pause again and I'll go back to the starting state and here you're going to see that the handles are blue and the control points are in perfect straight line alignment here, okay? And these gray dots are going to show us the path that those control points are going to follow during the animation. So as I scrub forward, you're going to see that those control points move in a straight line, all right? In order to do this morph, this point needs to move, and also the control points need to move from their starting to ending states. And the quickest way to do that is in a straight line. But what happens is that once those control points get out of alignment, you'll see that we're turning them red right now, that's gonna cause that anchor point to become a corner basically, all right? And you get this hard kink there or point. So whenever you see the red handles, that means things are out of alignment. So the problem to solve is how do we keep these control points in alignment? So the solution is instead of interpolating everything linearly in a straight line, we can use what's called a rotational interpolation to get a much smoother curve throughout the entire animation. I'm just gonna turn off the UI here and show you that now as the animation happens, you'll see that the control points are moving in a very smooth arc, okay? They're actually rotating from start to finish on both sides, and the length of those handles is also changing appropriately. The key here, though, to focus on is the fact that throughout the entire animation, both control points are in perfect straight line alignment, and that makes this a very smooth curve through that point, all right? You're never going to see that kink again. So let me just turn off those handles and I'll run the animation again without any text. And if you focus on this area here, you'll just see a very, very smooth animation and it looks awesome. To use this new rotational interpolation on an individual tween, you'll just pass an object into the Morph SVG plugin with the type property set to rotational. You can also set Morph SVG plugin's default type to rotational to have it applied to all of your morphing animations. The new rotational type also affects anchor points. They all move based on their angle and distance to an origin which you can control. Let me show you how it works. In this demo, we have a hippo morphing into a circle, and at first glance, it looks pretty cool. Similar to the previous demo, we're using these tracer lines here to show you the motion of the anchor points. So let me just pause and take a look at these little lines that are coming off the anchors, all right? They're just showing us how those anchors move between the start shape and the end shape. And since the shortest distance is a straight line, they're using a linear interpolation. Now the problem with this though, is that there are some glitches. Let's pay attention to this back leg here, and you'll notice that at a certain point, it sort of collapses on itself, and you get this path intersecting itself here, all right? And that doesn't look all that great. So what I'm going to do is turn on the GUI and I'm going to set the type to rotational. And when I do that, you're going to see the things sort of clean up themselves automatically. Let me turn off the text and again I'm going to scrub a little bit. 
Here we have an origin set at 50%, 50%, and as I'm scrubbing, you'll now notice that these lines are sort of showing a rotation of the anchor point, and they're actually rotating around that point. As I scrub forward, pay attention to that back leg, and you'll notice that it doesn't really collapse on itself anymore, all right? We also have a sort of ghosted out version of the hippo showing us what this would look like with linear interpolation so that we can compare the two. So the integrity of this back leg here, for the most part, is staying together very well, but there are a few points right up here in the top right that are getting a little bit too close to each other. So what I want to show you is that we can actually move this origin somewhere over here so that those lines don't cross. So let me turn on the user interface again, and I'm going to set the origin here to be 20%, 60%. We'll turn things off, and now you'll see that those points don't ever get bunched up here, all right? We're gonna focus right on these points right here. And by moving that origin over, you'll see that the path never crosses in on itself. And you can see that the previous version did that weird squiggly thing, all right? So now, with the type set to rotational, and by providing a better morph origin, we get a really, really clean morph between these two shapes. Let me just turn on that GUI one more time so that I can focus on the code. And I wanna show you that we're going to specify the origin as a string here. Next, I'll show you how you can set the origin for the start and end shape. So in this demo here, we have a bird morphing into a dolphin and the results really aren't all that pleasant, all right? There's a lot of paths and points that are crossing over each other and it just looks a little bit awkward. So what I want to do is activate this find morph origin utility that we have. And the next time I run, what's going to happen is we're going to see the origin and lines being drawn to both origins, okay? So before I get into it, this find morph origin is a standalone utility. It's not part of morph SVG plugin because it would make it too big. But the basic idea is that you pass in the start shape and ending shape and a few different parameters. And what it's going to do is produce this UI for for you that allows you to move the origins around, okay? As soon as this tool is activated, it creates its own tween of the animation, and it's gonna override any existing tweens that you may have on those shapes. So with that said, I wanna focus on these points that are being drawn, keep an eye on sort of the lines, and notice the rotation that's happening around these origins, okay? So with type rotational, you'll notice that there's clearly a rotation going on around these points. Now where things get sort of awkward is usually when the origin is outside the shape. So in the case of the dolphin, the origin is outside of the shape. If I pull it over here, notice how all the points are gonna rotate around that origin and it looks even worse, all right? If I put it up on the nose, you'll notice that some points are all rotating around that origin at the end. So for the dolphin here, I'm gonna move the origin more to its center of mass, if you will, somewhere around here. And by just doing that, you'll notice that the morph gets way better, all right? Things might get a little bit close in the tail here. Um, so for the bird, maybe I'll just punch it down here a little bit. And again, the idea is that you can play around with these points very easily. You get the actual string values of both origins available to you here that you can see. And again, although the results might not be totally perfect, in the cases where you have something that looks really bad, chances are changing the origins are gonna get you something that looks much, much better. So assuming that we like this sort of animation that we have here, we would just go and disable the find morph origin call, and then you would go up into your actual tween where you're morphing the dolphin. And here I could just do something like activate this origin. And I just wanna point out we have the start and end values as a string separated by a comma. And let me just run this. And now the find morph origin tool will go away. And there's my finished animation. For more information on morph SVG plugin and the find morph origin utility, just check out the morph SVG docs. They're loaded up with plenty of demos and info. This next feature is super cool. Morph SVG can now render to canvas. Check out this demo. You'll see that I have an SVG of a heart here, 
And when I hit play, it morphs to a star, into a thumb, into a rocket, into an apple, and then into a plug, and a few more other things. Using GS Dev Tools, I can scrub through there, as you would expect. Now check out the code. We have a typical timeline being built, and we just have a series of tweens in here morphing to those different shapes. Now I want to jump over to the HTML side of things here, and you'll see that in my HTML, I have this blank canvas element here. There's nothing in it whatsoever, and it's sitting right under the word canvas here on the page. And then you'll see I have the SVG where all the animation was happening. Well, I'm going to go back over to the JavaScript panel, and I'm going to take this one little line of code here, and let me just uncomment it. And it says, morph SVG plugin dot default render equals draw. All right, what's that going to do? Well, let's rerun the demo. And by only making that little change, voila, we now have that animation being rendered in an HTML5 canvas as well, and it looks identical to the SVG version. Let me pause that. All right, so this default render allows you to specify a function that's going to get called on every update. So right now, that function is called draw, and let's scroll down to see what our draw function actually does, all right? So the draw function that we're using here takes in a raw path and target parameters. The raw path is basically an array of arrays that contain all the path data. So each subarray has the X and Y coordinates for each individual path segment. The target is the actual shape that's being morphed. And you may or may not need that inside of your draw function. Uh, but basically what happens is we loop through the main array uh, and grab all the data for each segment and then we use standard Canvas API calls to render those segments to the screen. So if you're familiar with Canvas, you'll know about move to and Bezier curve to, and then we'll close off the path when we're done, all right? We're expecting that most people that work with Canvas will be able to just take this draw method and use it in their own projects with very little work. So before I go, let me just play this animation one more time so you can see how cool the Canvas animation is. And really, once this draw function is available, all you need to do is set your default render, okay? And then that function is going to be called every time one of these tweens in the timeline is run. If you want to specify a render function for an individual tween, you can do so using the object syntax and setting the render property. And lastly, you can morph raw data too. You don't even need an SVG. More information on that in the docs. Hope you enjoy all these new features in Morph SVG. Happy tweening.